Also Podcast. I actually did a two pound bicep curl today. Yeah, how'd that in, go? In, in uh, Pilates class. I yeah. pushed myself. Wow. Yeah, I pushed myself. Normally That's I do the Barbie weights, the one pounders, but up to two. Hey, I had to flex a little bit when I posted on my IG story today yeah. that I destroyed my phone. I had to flex. That, hey, I was doing some big weight here. Okay? Well, this oh, was, yeah. I wasn't doing some like, you know, it wasn't Banded like I workouts. dropped a 20 pound weight. This was a 250 pound leg curl here. And the, and that's the, actually very impressive, you know, but I wish at that time I had been doing a 20 pound leg curl. Cause maybe in that moment it would have saved the phone. You but be in the position that yeah. you're in right I'm going to have to put a photo of my iPhone right here. So everybody can see this. Cause Absolutely. I don't think they realize how destroyed my iPhone is. It's so bulging. it is, it is bulging yeah, and it's I'm giving up fully. And, yeah. And then after this, after you leave, mm -hmm. I'm going to drive to an Apple store and I'm going to be honest, my worst trait is I have no uh, skills at navigating anywhere without my phone. So so that's your worst trait by far like be, be real with us <laughs> like <laughs> I have a bad sense of direction other than that I'm fucking perfect <laughs> um, no no truly though like I I'm like there's a solid chance mm -hmm. I get completely lost and you get a uh, citizen alert that there's a man stranded on yeah. the the highway not knowing where he's going today that's me I have a very genius idea okay send me your location or share your whatever your your location with me, and I will navigate you on the phone. Okay, like, how, am right. to, how am I supposed now to share my left. location with you if my phone's destroyed? I am a model. Don't ask a lot from me. You didn't. You <laughs> didn't think that idea through. I don't and have I a phone. I started it with I'm a genius. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna just that. Nope. Blind that's, confidence. Yeah. yeah so right. so yeah. So I have no way. The only way would be is if if I had the uh, you know how iPads you can have like cellular. Yeah. I definitely don't have that package. So I, I don't have that. At least you have Apple Care. You I have do have some Apple packages. Care. Yeah. Actually, I need to I need to kind of say that to everybody right mm -hmm. now. If you don't have Apple Care, get Apple Care because yep. for I destroyed my phone today and it looks like it's going to cost me knock on wood hopefully this stays the case it looks like it's going to cost me a thousand or a hundred dollars to get a replacement mm -hmm. um and otherwise it would be like fourteen hundred dollars yeah. so so don't be an idiot yeah buy apple care highly recommend 10 out of 10 and also don't put your phone where i don't even know where how weights to, could possibly crash yeah down. where yeah where weights could possibly go yeah because I did it in 30 seconds, not 30, three seconds later, had a destroyed phone and had to leave the gym and then had to do this podcast. So I had, really yeah. had to get myself together. And you had to yell some swear words, but yeah. it's cathartic. So yeah. now we're here. And yeah, we're here. We're here. Improve your day. So, all right, Anna, to start the podcast, yeah. I need you to just, everyone screws up how to pronounce your name. So can you clarify yeah. how to pronounce your name? Let's say your full name and then kind of what you go by on Instagram. Okay. Uh, first name's Anna Katarina. <laughs> <laughs> Throws me off all every this, time you say it. All of a sudden, it. I become very foreign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anna Katarina, think of Anstela. Yeah. I go by Anna. Say that three AK. times fast, people. I can't, and I've known her for four years. Anna Katarina, okay? think of Anstela. Yeah. That, it's the coolest thing about me, other than my squirrel call, and then it all goes downhill. I remember the first time I realized what your actual like full name was, yeah. was when you Venmoed me. And oh, was, yeah. And I was like, oh, it's not just Anna Katarina. Yeah, I know. People <laughs> see, are I like, can't even, see how I just tried to do the accent there, and I still can't completely do it i'm close you sound like you're purring it kind of works <laughs> Just, uh, uh yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's she's coming it's a struggle it's a struggle so all right to start off the podcast we're going to talk a little bit about kind of who you are so where are you from originally i am from sonoma california and if you don't know where that is it's wine country close to napa 45 from san francisco there we go and then where did you go to college at went to university of oregon and then i got a second degree at the art institute okay and then okay so when you were there at the art institute mm -hmm. what did you think that you were going to be doing right now because how old are you now 29 29 i'm also 20 oh. wait which one of us turns 30 first again me may oh, oh. may 11 baby. oh damn what a shame mm -hmm. what a shame yeah i'm an elder for like five months it's gonna be that you're uh, 30 top. and i'm 29 yeah. yep yep so uh so yeah when you were back there like what did you think you'd be doing now because fast that's basically rewind 10 years right well, I am indecisive in every facet of my life, and I initially thought that I would be designing cars. I wanted to do industrial design, and then I had a professor very early on tell me, this is a male-dominated industry. You're not going to last, and he was very correct because I have absolutely no gumption. Well, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right. I, I just backed down instantly. Maybe that was his first test. Um, and then I thought maybe, you know, designing packaging for beauty and, you know, different labels and cosmetics, that kind of transition into hard alcohol. I love spirit design. I'm a big whiskey gal. So designing bottles and packaging for that. Um, and then lo and behold, I become a 
flipping Instagram model and I'm just, what a you world. Know, I know. And I'm, you know, marketing the brands that I wanted to, well, I guess, design for one day. So when did you, I guess, see kind of the, the transformation in your head of like where you thought your life was going to go versus now all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm, I'm an influencer. Like this is what I do. I think everything was really bizarre because I mean, I grew up in a small town. I go to university of Oregon. Eugene isn't exactly like a bustling, you know, city. Have you been to Eugene, Oregon? No. It's, I don't even think I've ever been to Oregon, period. I think it's like the meth capital of the United States. Oh, nice. Yeah, so <laughs> feel, don't send your daughters there. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I just, I never saw myself ever being in this sort of thing. I remember, you know, getting an Instagram account in like 2012. And, you know, the the OG Instagram influencer is like, Ellie, what's her face? Uh, Ellie, go, I should cut this. Why am I... Ellie Gonzalez or Ellie? I literally follow Whatever. We're keeping, it, we're, we're keeping it in the there. The Sarah but. Stages. Like all of this. I don't even know who that is. Oh my God. All of the like, they were just because so, you're older than me. <laughs> seriously, I got that five minutes of, of knowledge and research. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically just like seeing those girls and thinking I'm like, I am a completely different species than these people. Like these yeah. are just like freaks of na- nature, hit the genetic lottery. And then I would just always had been a nerd. I always put my focus in academics. Um, I didn't think of myself as a model in any way, shape or form. And then, you know, moving down to Newport to go to the art Institute. Next thing I know, you know, companies are reaching out to me and I had like an agent find me on Instagram and I was private at the time. I was private until like 2017. Okay. So I say that as if it's like, (laughs) so so exciting, but I was just, I wasn't chasing any sort of Instagram following. Right. And then it just kind of happened. I started booking a ton of jobs when I was still in school. Um, I would have, you know, a night class and I would be shooting all day in LA and then commute hour traffic, heading back to my five o'clock, six six o'clock class and juggling both things was very disorienting. And it started making, I started thinking I could be making a lot more money doing this versus an hourly graphic design sort of wage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I made sure I graduated and then I started pursuing this full time. And what do you think, I guess, like, what do you think will come next for you? Have you thought about kind of how long you want to do this and, and what do you think will come next for you? I don't think that this has ever been something that I'm fully comfortable doing. I don't, yeah. you know, even if it's something, it's just been, it's been easy money. Yeah. And it's allowed me a lot of opportunities that I know I would never have had without it. And I'm very thankful for those things. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's the culture of it. Um, it's the lifestyle of it. It's so appearance focused. I mean, of yeah. course it's yeah. all, it's all surface. And I think that that has been something that is not healthy on the psyche. Um, I can only see it leading to more problems the longer you stay in it. So I think transitioning my life into something that I have to use my brain and I'm not saying the Instagram models don't have to, they have to be in charge of, they have to advocate for themselves. They have to write up contracts and, you know, brand themselves and rebrand themselves ever so often. And that takes hard work and intelligence. But with that being said, I think I need to transition into something that requires research and writing and, you know, discussing things that I'm actually interested in like psychology and true crime. And I'm hoping that my best friend and I started a true crime podcast um, Wait, plug um, the podcast right now. Crime Bar. Crime Bar. Go <laughs> find it. Spotify, right YouTube, every, everywhere, right? All the platforms. All yeah. the platforms. Every, every place you can get something, we're on it. Yep. Um, yeah. So I think if I can build something along the lines of that, that would make me very happy. Freedom, um, not having to be in one city for a job is like the ultimate goal. I want to be able to go around the world as long as I have my laptop. I can work. That freedom is everything to me. Yeah. I think that's kind of what COVID has done for a lot of people too, is really showed them like, I think years ago, the idea of like working remote was like, nobody has a remote job, right? Nowadays, it's like somebody's applying for a job and they're like, oh, I can't work remote. Now I'm out, right? Exactly. So, I mean, even my cousin just moved here from Texas and Mm -hmm. she was like, it just told her company, yeah, hey, I'm moving out to California. I'm going to work here still, but I'm moving out to California. Yeah. And so she lives like 30 minutes from me now, which I love. So yeah. If you have Wi-Fi and a laptop, then you can pretty much do any job if you really think about it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this whole, the, I'm always interested in the psychology of influencers and how, you know, a lot of people like yourself kind of started off where they didn't, it's not like they were pursuing this because no. this wasn't a actual thing, wasn't right? A thing like yet. probably up until I don't know, like 2018, maybe yeah, very much. The, the term influencer wasn't even like a typical expected, I mean, no one even knew that term. Right. And nowadays you hear somebody who's 18 or 19 and they're like, yeah, I want to be an influencer when When I I grow grow up. up. Right. And that's such a interesting, like mental dilemma of like, 
in order to pursue something like that, there, there's a huge like psychological hit when you, when you try to pursue something like that, because you're always focused on how you look and how people perceive you. And, yeah. you know, and you as a 29 year old have figured out ways of how to process that and deal with that. Absolutely. But somebody who's 18 or 19 doesn't have the emotional, uh, you know, development yet to deal with a lot of the psychological pressures of having a large uh, following on social Absolutely. media. And that's always the thing that's made me nervous when I'm, if I'm advising somebody who's younger on, on on this whole field and everything like that, I'm always so, so nervous for them because I'm like, dude, you see the, the, the benefits of all of this where someone's glamorous. traveling. Yeah. Someone's traveling. They're going to this cool restaurant. They're mm-hmm. getting their food for free and all that shit. They're, they might be getting free clothes and everything like that, but you don't see all of the psychological, you know, issues that come from a job where basically you're paid because you're good looking. And yeah. And with that's any a weird, job, yeah. With any job, I don't think anyone's applying to a job and thinking like, okay, longevity wise, how is this going to affect my overall like coping, my relationships, my psychological issues, my personality? It's, but with especially this, like I have so many ways that I could take that question because yeah. I have thought about this time and time again, but I would say, I can't, Keep thinking here. Keep thinking here. My ADD. I'm like leaning away. You better crop this out because my ADD just completely forgot the question. All good. How does it affect you? Oh, I mean, prime example, going away for the holidays, not really working out, eating what you want. I gain 10 pounds. I get back to LA and it's not like a normal human situation where it's like, just hit the gym every day. And you know, when you lose it, you lose it. In my situation, like I have to then cancel that shoot. Yeah. Like I have brands that are relying on me, so I can't just fluctuate weight because I am a product and I actually owe the company that I signed a contract with to look a certain way. So I can't shoot for a company that's a fitness oriented brand and have softness on my midsection. You know, I have to look for, I have to look like what they signed up for. And the, uh, the pressure around that has been very unhealthy for someone. I mean, I think for everyone, but I grew up a ballerina. I, I danced for 17 years. I've always had an immense amount of pressure when it comes to my physique <clears throat> my throat just gave up on me and clenched up because I get very <laughs> all good. <laughs> I riled up about this, but um, I've never been. There's never been a point in time in my life where I haven't had to think about the way that I look and what I'm eating. Yeah, and I think I've gotten to a point as an adult where I would rather just like kill myself in the gym and be able to eat what I want. That has made me a lot happier. But with that being said, I'm then building a physique that companies don't want to work with. They want, you know, thin and toned, but they don't want too muscular because that's masculine. And there's always going to be something for everybody. But for my particular look, they want something that my body physically cannot do without starvation and ultimately not lifting too heavy of a weight and things like that. Yeah. So it has affected every single facet of my life. Um you want to talk, what was the next part of well, that? Well, and then on top of that, honestly, the, the the thing that's always interesting to me is that a lot of these companies, when they're looking at someone's Instagram, mm-hmm. a lot of people are, are face tuning their body and they're, oh, and they're yeah. doing this and they're doing that. And so then, you know, somebody who doesn't do that gets compared to somebody who is doing that. And then there's societal pressure to, can I look like that person when it's like, it's not even remotely possible to look like that person because yeah. that person's doing, you know, nipping this and tucking this and doing that. And it's like, it's not possible to look like that. Mm-hmm. And obviously that's then damaging for the younger generation, the Gen Zers who are growing up and, and seeing somebody on Instagram, that's not even, it's not even possible to ever look like that. Yeah. And I think with that, that is something that's discussed a lot more than even on the other side of it. Something that I've had to deal with is being a letdown. So I have a lot of anxiety around the idea of people seeing me strictly through video and photos where I have been edited and, you know, there's wardrobe and hair and makeup and good lighting and, you know, multiple different takes. And that, then that, that finalized product is being pushed out there. But like me day to day, I'm never going to be that good. And so that has really affected me when I go into, you know, weddings or vacations or, you know, I, God forbid I meet a guy on Instagram because the the entire time I'm going to be thinking, is this, am I let down in any sort of way? Like, did you sign up for something else? And I think that that's been a huge thing for dating and like social anxiety and things like that, where for the most part, people are, you know, meeting you and they're focusing on the fact that like you're funnier or smarter or more engaging than they thought you would be. 
they're not focused on the fact that, you know, maybe your jaw's a little bit more square or, you know, your ankles are fatter or something like and trivial. I, and I don't think anybody truly notices anything like that. I mean, you and I have had these conversations Ooh. over the years that you have a lot of anxiety when it comes to, you know, do I look, you know, as good in person as I do on social media? And mm-hmm. is someone judging me because there's perfect lighting in this photo, but yeah. then there's not in this moment and, and things like that. And so, you know, we've talked a lot about kind of the anxiety that then gets built up because of this job of and how that impacts impacts you and like you said your personal life and and dating and things like that because there's all that goes with you everywhere you go of you know if somebody recognizes you somewhere am I living up to their expectations Mm -hmm. even though at the end of the day like to be honest who gives a fuck what that person thinks right but there's still that anxiety there of like you want to uphold the image that people see that and also it's we always like to comfort ourselves with people aren't thinking that but that's unfortunately not the case because even going to influencer events, I've, I don't go to them anymore for this exact reason, but I've been to a few and the amount of times I have heard girls cluster together and then whisper to each other, oh, she doesn't look like her photos or, oh, you know, she's not as pretty as her pictures. And they find comfort in knowing that that person is human and they have acne and they have a bump on their nose. It's like, It's like all of those, you know, paparazzi shots of so-and-so having cellulite and, you know, a smaller butt than the way she wanted to portray it. People find relief in other people's flaws. And that's really, really sad. But that's also a symptom of what we're doing with Instagram. We're making people cling to flaws so that they can, like, forgive themselves when they've gained five pounds. And we're all, and we're also making it where you're constantly comparing yourself to other people because at the end of the day, I mean, as a photographer, I can always say like, you know, I don't care how good looking somebody is. There's always going to be bad photos of them. Like, and and you and I joke around where I'll send you a photo where you're in between expressions and your face looks goofy. And it's like, that's every single person ever. When you're changing expressions, that's what happens. Your face looks goofy. Right. Mm -hmm. And yet And it's the same thing of obviously when you're, you know, I've always, when someone takes that candid photo of you and you're like chins down and you have like seven seven chins. chins. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, that's a terrible look. (laughs) I look like a thumb. (laughs) Yeah. And, and so those are things that everybody experiences, but then I think sometimes social media pits people against each other and all of a sudden you're comparing yourself to this person and going, well, you know, they don't look as good. So, you know, I feel better about myself. And it's like, damn, that's a terrible situation to get yourself into too, because then you become, if you're always comparing yourself to other people, then you're never actually truly loving yourself. And that is one of the biggest things that I think everybody needs to focus on is more ways to love yourself. Because at the end of the day, social media and shit does not matter. And it's going to go away in some way, shape or form. It's going to be, it's constantly evolving. Right. Right. And, and when we say go away, it's not like obviously Instagram's not going anywhere or anything like that, but the role it has in your life changes over time. And I've, I've seen that in terms of like, I used to really give a shit if I posted a photo and it, and it did really, really well. And so for so many years, I was basically had this thought in my head of like, if I don't post a photo where this girl's showing a lot of cleavage or her butt's out or whatever, I'm not going to get a lot of likes. And then if Mm -hmm. I don't get a lot of likes, what if people don't book me for shoots and yada, yada, yada. And then I built that up in my head of like, I can't post that photo because that photo is really pretty, but it doesn't, it's not sexy enough. Right. And then I'm not going to get the engagement that I need. And what if that hurts my, you know, ability to make money. Right. And yet as I get older, as I'm, you know, 29 turning 30 in October, now I'm kind of like, I don't give a shit. If I like a photo, I'm posting that photo. And now I say to myself, and you and I have had this conversation, how do we figure out what is next for us in our career so that we don't have to worry about that at some point? Because right now we still sadly have to worry about engagement because that is, you know, how we, yeah, that's how we make our money. And so at some point though, we want to get to the point where that doesn't matter and we don't have to worry about that. And that's the interesting part is like the, the chapters of life. Like we've gone through so many different chapters and that next chapter is figuring out how do we get further away from what we're tied into currently, which is posting on Instagram and getting a certain amount of engagement and all of that. How do we get to that next chapter? And I think that that's something that if I were to talk to somebody that was younger, I'm very lucky that I got into this at, you know, age 25, 26. So at least I had, uh, I had more years under my belt of just experience and knowledge. But with that being said, if I were to talk to these 18 and 19 year olds, I would say have boundaries. You need to figure out what you are going to feel comfortable with when you're 30 and 40. Look out for your future self because I know I've been put in positions where I wouldn't stand behind that as a 30 and 40 year old, but I thought was okay because I'm, you know, 25 years old. And you have to look at yourself as 
if I want to be a mom one day, I want to be a wife one day, what you do in your younger years is completely up to you, but you have to look out for your future self, like advocate for the, for the more mature evolved version of you. That isn't always going to be okay. Having lingerie photos out there. Yeah. And I think that a lot of 19, 20 year olds, they're getting hooked, not specifically 19 and 20, but yeah, younger young people, generations, yeah. they are getting hooked to that instant gratification and that boost of this gets 20,000 likes, this gets 7,000. I'm going to do what it takes to get the 20,000. Yeah. Their boundaries start shifting. They start allowing more. They realize that if they just start taking one article of clothing off, they start doing a, a different you know genre of images. Yeah. They're going to get more attention and engagement. And the next thing they know, they're building a brand that they do not stand behind. Yeah. And it happens very, very fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it happens very quickly. And it's one of the things that I worry about the most when somebody gets into this industry. Mm -hmm. it, and we've talked about that before. You have to have a line and you can't cross that line. Absolutely. And, you know, and that's a very important thing to have because I think a lot of people, you know, struggle to, if they don't completely say this is what my line is then it's very easy to cross over a line and then realize you've gone too far and once you've gone too far it's very difficult to to come back right yeah and you're the one dealing with the repercussions of the guilt and the shame that coincides right. with that mm -hmm. you know th that guy that's telling you you're gorgeous and giving you those likes and your images they're not going to be the one comforting you and walking you through those decisions that you might have made seven years prior right right so next thing I want to talk about, and we've talked about this in private, but when yeah. you go on podcasts and you talk about yourself and your personal life, that gives you a lot of anxiety. Why, oh why is that? I, I mean, I think a lot of people relate to that where it's like, I, I try to be as honest with the people in my life. I feel like I am a open book. There is not much that everyone in my life doesn't know about me, but when it comes to Instagram and just the, the population that doesn't actually know every facet of you there's a lot of pressure because people are going to want to, people want to misconstrue things that you say. Um, I have a really big issue with confrontation and making people mad. So if I were to be honest, let's say about my dating life, my personal life, I'm going to have to deal with those people that I've dated that I'm not with for a very specific reason. And then that trait coming out to, you know, get back at me yeah. sort of thing. And so it's like, I have to be very careful with what I say because people don't always have your best interest, you know, and they're going to want to spin things so that they're not the bad guy when that's not what I'm aiming to do. I'm just trying to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to clickbait this YouTube video and make it make you sound awful. So we just get a lot of views. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fair. <laughs> Me with uh, a double chin, the real Anna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to actually go in there and uh, not nip and talk. Instead, oh, I'm no. going to, you know, Let's yeah, it out. yeah, we're going to show Anna that we're going to show yeah. the real Anna. Let's fill the screen. Um, but uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, I think that's it's definitely something that I always tell people at the end of the day, as long as you're speaking the truth and it's your truth, yeah. even if that truth bothers somebody else, if they didn't want you speaking that truth, don't do the thing that causes them to speak that truth. You oh, know, it's so easy to say that and feel that because that's how I live my life where it's like, say the things that you mean, because if someone were to leak this conversation, which is such a weird protected way of living, but it's something that you have to really think about. My mom has reiterated certain things of do not say certain things to partners that might haunt them or hurt their self-esteem later on in life, be very intentional with your words, yeah. even when you're your angriest and you're most betrayed, because that is, I mean, at the end of the day, even if someone's an asshole, they're still a human. Yeah. And I don't want to be even remotely close to being what caused any sort of insecurity. Yeah. And unfortunately I've had partners that do not have my best interest in mind or think the way that I do, <laughs> but I only have myself and I can only represent myself. And if that provokes someone or makes someone mad, I know I'm being truthful yeah. and I know that I'm not coming from a place of getting back at anyone. It's just kind of what happened to me. Yeah. I mean, I have a policy, like I'm honest about literally everything and I have no boundaries with any of that. So yeah. I always say if like, if anybody wants to know anything about me, I'll tell you because simply I have nothing to hide and yeah. I'm, I'm more than willing to talk about anything, which also means, you know, when you're talking about your truth, if your truth means that you were hurt by somebody in your past or whatever, I, I've always erred on the side of like, express that because your yeah. truth is important to discuss because otherwise you bottle that up. And if you bottle that up, that's extremely unhealthy. And so you have to express that. And I do think the cool part about podcasts is like you and I have had so many conversations in mm -hmm. private, but when you, when you talk about this sort of stuff in the public light, because I do think there's a way that there's like misunderstandings of, of who you are and who influencers are in general. Yeah. But yet, you know, I always say to you, and we've talked about this before of like, I feel like you come across on Instagram as this like, 
badass, like never has any self doubt person, and yeah. uh, and like to a, some point like intimidating. Yeah. And then I'm looking at you and like knowing you as a friend, I'm like Anna. First of all, is not intimidating. No. Sec- <laughs> second of all, like Anna's like a goofy ass person. Like yeah. we have extremely goofy conversations yeah. and and things like that. And then you know on top of that. Uh, you do have, have self-doubt at times and you're human in that. Like you, you have anxieties, you have insecurities and we talk about those a lot. And, you know, even times in the past when you've talked about like guys that you're talking to or dating or whatever, oh, yeah. and you'll say, you know, you'll phrase it sometimes of like, am I good enough for them? And yes, we've talked about always. that where I'm like, dude, are you good enough for them? Are they good enough for you? Like it, we got to change. Got to flip the script. Yeah. And so there yeah. are I think a lot of, of misunderstandings about influencers and, and yourself in general. And so what do you think are some of the biggest uh, misunderstandings of just like influencers in general? God, I mean, I just stuck on one of the lines you just said where it's like, I feel like I'm not alone in this where I almost feel like I have to package myself in a way where I'm not missing any points where yeah. it's like, if I'm going to be taking your time, I want it to be worthwhile. So I need to provide intelligence and humor and care and do things for you. And I almost stop looking at myself as a person. And it's like, I Stepford wife it up where it's like, I don't want to be an inconvenience in any way, shape or form. And so then that is when I start looking at it as, am I good enough for them? And it's like, you are human and you're allowed to be negative that day or off that day. But I think based off of some of the people that I've dated, I don't feel like I'm allowed to have a bad day. I am in the permanent position of being the cheerleader and not being the one inconvenience of their day, if that makes sense. And so I think it's just being selective so that I don't have to ask that question to my friends of, am I good enough? Because then that is just a symptom of being with somebody that isn't actually with you for any of the right reasons. Right. You don't ask those questions when you're with a a real human being that wants a human being partner. Right, right. So would you say then that's the biggest misunderstanding is how you come across, you know, perfect on on social media. I think influencers in general tend to come across perfect. And then when you try to be your organic self, that person holds you to that standard of like, you're supposed to be perfect. You're not supposed to have any like clinks in your armor. I think that there's a little bit of that, of course. Um, I think that I take a self-deprecating approach on Instagram and in real life because I feel like if I say the negative thing, then no one can say it and it won't shock me. It's kind of like if I remove what will make me seem arrogant or conceited, then people won't assume that of me and then they won't come after me because I notice that there are girls that come off like they think they're hot shit and they just get annihilated in the Instagram comments because they come off very confident and God forbid someone be attractive and be confident. Right. People do not like that. And so that has been a, an approach that I have taken and it has become very much ingrained in who I am where it's like, I am the first to make fun of myself. In fact, I had an ex tell me that his pet peeve about me was I don't give myself enough credit and I don't celebrate my stuff, my wins, my like day to day things if I look good that day, I'm not going to say I look good that day because someone's going to think it's conceited. Yeah. You know, so I feel like I downplay everything out of protection. Yeah. And I think that when people then meet me, I don't know. I I don't know how that comes off because I'm not a stranger looking at my Instagram. I just know how it feels to put that content out there. But I think that people think I'm a lot cooler than I am. I think people think I'm impressed by things that I'm not. Yeah. And when it comes to even, I think in general, if you're not in the influencer space, you're looking at these girls that are dressed a certain way, looking a certain way, and you assume that it takes a lot of work to maintain one of those women, which is like a weird way of phrasing it. But I could see how a normal man would look like look at a girl like me or the girls that I'm friends with or anyone on Instagram and think that requires a lot of work. That's There's a lot of competition there. That girl's talking to a lot of guys. That girl gets a lot done. That girl wants fancy dinners, the nicest cars, the nicest purses. When in reality, that is so far from what I think is cool or what I want. I don't want to be on a yacht. I don't want to be on a jet. I don't give a crap about a Louis Vuitton purse and a nice car. Just be a good human. Make me laugh. Take me to friggin', I mean, Baskin Robbins, Chick-fil-A. You know, it's like what I want is so simple I want someone that I can grocery shop with and watch shows with and just be comfortable having fun going to Home Depot and Lowe's with, you know, tailgate for a game. People that do everyday life things with me instead of like courting me in a position where they have to impress me. Right. And I think that that's what a lot of, in quotes, normal guys think when they see girls in quotes like me. Yeah. And and I think too, 
Because a lot of times I feel like when somebody talks about somebody in your position mm-hmm. talks about insecurities and whatnot, yeah. people almost think it's a joke because they're oh, like, yeah. oh, there's no way that girl is insecure about herself or like, how does, how is she insecure about her body? You know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And it's like, I always say that's the one thing that probably shocked me the most, obviously coming from a man standpoint, yeah. like when I got into this field, I didn't realize how many people have insecurities, not just women, but men in general yeah. too. But like people everybody has insecurities don't care how many followers mm-hmm. you have and you know i do feel like a lot of times people look at it and they're, they'll they look at you and they'll be like how does she have insecurities and it's like dude because you're human and humans have insecurities i don't care what you look like there's always an insecurity of i mean mm-hmm. you'll say to me sometimes you'll be like do my legs look too big and i'm yeah. like anna you're a tall person like and you played volleyball back in the day like you have a volleyball person's body like there's nothing wrong with not that play volleyball. what <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that played beach volleyball with me the past two years would be laughing right now. Oh, I have my. absolute no athletic Wait, capability. what sports? Did, why did I think that you played? Because you're was, tall. I was a ballerina for 17 years. Did you play basketball or anything? No. Did you play? <laughs> you any, wait, wait. wait did, no, that. I can't. But did you play any sport that involved your height? No. Well, I, I'm no. A, I'm, I'm an idiot. In fact, I did the one sport that you shouldn't have height for. <laughs> well, okay. Regardless, you're a tall person. Yes. With, okay. With, I'm a very athletic. Very looking, athletic body. I there we go. Weights. Yeah. I'm very active in the gym. So I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. And so, you know, there'd be times you're like, do my legs look too big here? And yeah. I'm like, no, they don't. Like, what are, no, not at all. And it's like, but those are things that you have that idea in your head of like, that's where that person's head goes. Yeah. And, you know, when they look at you and it's like, and we all have those insecurities about ourselves of, do I look this way? Do I, you know, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And those are just like, everybody has insecurities. And I think people need to realize that. And when you put people in a situation where they're comfortable enough to express those insecurities, you learn a lot about somebody and what they've been through because insecurities are always tied into past, you know, events that have occurred. And when you truly get to know someone, Somebody, you learn a lot about that. And I think that's a powerful thing to learn about somebody's insecurities. And once again, foster an environment comfortable enough to, to learn about that person. Absolutely. And I think that it's, it's tough discussing it because I, I put myself in this position voluntarily. So for me to complain about the exposure that I've gotten and the criticism I've gotten surrounding it does feel pretty ridiculous. It's like being on a reality TV show and then, you know, your truth gets leaked and you're pissed that it got out. It's like yeah. you're on reality TV. Yeah. But when it comes to even being an influencer, of course, we're going to have, in fact, more insecurities than the average person because the average person is going to be at an office job and no one gives two craps if they've gained 10 pounds over the holidays. Whereas, you know, I go about doing my same content and I have, you know, a message from Jerry in Wisconsin telling me I look fat. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm trying to be everything to everyone where, you know, half the demographic is telling me I'm too skinny. The other half is telling me I'm too fat. One's, you know, telling me I'm too big boned. What am I supposed to do about that? Right. You know, it's like people are requesting that you give them. It's almost like build it like a build a bear. But when it comes to a woman of like, you look better blonde, please go back blonde or, you know, stop getting spray tans. And it's like, all of a sudden you are just a product. Like you're a pair of Nikes that they're customizing for their birthday. Right. Right. And I think there's always that pressure to uh, try to make yourself perfect for everybody. And it's like that, it's impossible. that doesn't exist. Like you're always, I'm constantly self-reflecting and asking myself like, Mark, what do you want to, if there's something you want to change about yourself, like what is that? And, and why is that? And are you doing that because of somebody else? Or are you doing that because you believe it makes sense for you? Right. Yeah. And so you and I have had discussions about once again, like where we see our careers going. Mm-hmm. And I've said like, I don't want to be a photographer for the rest of my life. I love photography and shout outs to all the people who want to be a photographer for the rest of their life. I don't have that desire, but I'm not doing that because other people or anything like that. If anything, I think it'd be the opposite. And people would be like, you should be a photographer for the rest of your life. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. And I have to continue to self-reflect and ask myself, Mark, what do you want out of this world? And, and what are you doing to make that happen, but do it for you. And then, you know, once again, like constantly evolve. If there's a aspect of your personality that you want to work on or your daily habits or, you know, um, starting off your day with like journaling. Journaling has been something that I've really gotten into in the last year of just writing down my thoughts and, you know, and, and telling myself I'm doing that for myself because I don't even want to read back, honestly. Like, I don't think a year from now, like I'll read back and read them, but it's just helpful sometimes when you're having frustration. Like I know when I journal later and I talk about my dumb ass breaking my phone, yeah. it, it's healthy to get that out there. And I might even put my dumb ass self, put my phone where it shouldn't be. And for then sure. I broke it. And then 
I own it and I move forward, well, you know, it's unloading in a way that's healthy because I think a lot of people meet up with their friends and then the first, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes is just them unloading all of their problems. Yeah. And then the other person has become involuntarily a sounding board. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't sign up to take on that load. They right. already have their own thing. That's friendship. You go back and forth. That's fair. And that's fine. But when he comes to journaling, it's kind of like how I see it is maybe this takes the emotion or the sentimentality out of it, but you are kind of putting down on paper, this made me feel like this. So you can look back and think, okay, that person gave me a positive feeling versus a negative. And you're kind of almost, it's like having a graph or some sort of let's stats yeah. written out on paper of what fulfills you and what does not. And I think that's a really healthy and quick way of getting to the point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it also helps me quickly get to the, get past the point of like, Mark, you idiot, you did this. And instead look at it and go, Mark, you're in a blessed position that if you need to buy a new iPhone, you can afford you can. to buy the new iPhone. And that is a blessed position. 100%. And so, you know, and the fact that I have a, a MacBook that I can text you on and tell you, you know, hey, let's, we're still meeting up today for the podcast. And I have an iPad that I can take upstairs and answer your text messages from up and there. And you got a laptop. Right. You know, life yeah. is good, baby. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I have the things that I need to get, you know, get everything done. And it's yeah. like, so you quickly go from that, you know, kind of self-deprecating, Mark, you idiot, why'd you do that to, hey, you're in a great position. Luckily for you, you're able to get past this as quickly as possible. Because you work your ass off, so you have a savings, you yeah. know, and you're always trying to grow yourself. I mean, I don't know a person that has as many things going on as you do. Well, thank you're you. You're constantly educating <laughs> yourself, and it's really cool. Always always striving, it's striving to Scrolling. be my best. You know, I mean, I, I look at it, and I say to myself all the time, like, dude, you're in such a blessed position. Mm -hmm. Never waste that. Like, you have, you have things going for you. But, you know, just don't ever waste that. Don't look back later on in life and be like, why didn't you do this, this or this? You know, even the podcast, I was so nervous about getting it going. But yeah. now I look at it and, and I can already tell we're whatever we're 37 minutes into this conversation. And I know this is a great conversation. I know this is something that mm -hmm. people will want to hear. And, you know, for so long, you and I have had these conversations in private and it's like, oh, yeah. well, people need to hear this shit. And, and now yeah, we're doing are. it, you know. <laughs> and so... What I want to get into next, I mean, obviously we just talked about dating life and, and kind of how social yeah. media affects a lot of that. And so I want to get into kind of a, a little game per se, whatever Beautiful. we want to call it. I don't know, a, a uh, activity okay. where I give you a uh, characteristic about somebody and then you tell me if it's a green flag, a red flag or an orange flag. So orange is in the middle. So green is a go, red's a no, orange is a maybe. Yep. Yep. Okay. So first one, shitty friends. Oh, that's a red flag. 100%. <laughs> Except for... My one of my worst exes had the best friends possible. Like I connected really? with them instantly, loved them instantly, still have friendships with them. So sometimes people can have real great friends and have a really great radar for good humans, but be pretty shitty themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair. And then uh, let's say a very private person doesn't voluntarily open up about a lot. I think that that can actually be a good thing. Uh, it depends on what they're not opening up about. If it's, do you, do you want my long answers or is this supposed to be quick and no, fast? Go, no, 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 go, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to privacy, I feel like what I do and how I live my life is almost not normal. I'm putting everything out there from what I eat to my chiropractor's appointments to my dermatologist appointments. And that is almost unhealthy and bizarre. So meeting somebody that doesn't have an Instagram account would number one be incredibly sexy. <laughs> Number two is private and doesn't put everything out there. All of the things that I think are attractive in a man running his social media are the opposite of what I'm doing. I think that somebody that is profusely posting, that is a, I hate using the word symptom, I've already used it four times, is a symptom of unhappiness because you are seeking validation. If you if you do not have business doing Instagram, like yeah. they don't go hand in hand and you are profusely posting, you to me seem very insecure and lonely. If it is what you're doing for a living and you need to put stuff out there, pump out stuff to get more numbers because it's your industry, like it is mine, Yeah, that is one thing. But I am not doing it because I want constant attention. Right. So yeah. I think a man being more private when it comes to social media, and it's very, very attractive. Um, when it comes to, let's say, let's say privately, life, Yeah, let's say privately you're having a discussion with them and they're just kind of... Walls up. I don't think anyone owes me any information, um, especially when it comes to a first conversation. And if there's somebody, if they can even express, I am a very private person. It takes me a while to get comfortable. Then they are giving you every single opportunity to say, 
then I can either wait it out or not because that's the difference between wanting instant gratification and something that's potentially deeper and meaningful. Yeah. So to address what you said about, um, yeah, when people are, are working and like their social media is directly yeah. tied into their job, I think people don't always realize there's certain times, even like with myself, if I know I'm posting like the podcast later, if I know I'm posting something important, mm-hmm. I'll post something earlier in the day that I know draws engagement, like a poll yes. or something like that, because I know that with the algorithm, it then is more likely that my future story will get a, will have Absolutely. more people see it. And if that's an important thing for people to see, then I'll do some dumbass poll before to just gain that engagement and whatnot. And I think, you know, so once again, it's like when it comes to the people who are, um, you know, very, very active on social media with their jobs, most of those people are like, God, I wish I could not be so active. Oh and my then, God. Yeah. It's mortifying. Like for, I, not to cut you off, but yeah. like, that's something that I actually am insecure about or I'm embarrassed by is when I'm out or I can assume, you know, a man or a, a per, any person looking at my Instagram would think that's a type of girl that I have to take 40 photos of a before dinner. Yeah. And it's like, that is, that's just not the case. I am actually then embarrassed to do that. Whereas a girl with, you know, an accounting job, she could ask for that photo because she's not seeking validation. She just wants a photo of, she's feeling good. She wants a picture. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But if I were to, I'm, you know, Instagram obsessed. Right. Self obsessed. Right. Right. And so I, you know, I kind of take, I don't want to say the opposite side of, of your take on the very private person. I'm a big, like, I, I truly believe in 100% transparency on everything. Mm-hmm. And I and I know that's a difficult thing to ask for somebody right away, yeah. obviously. But the, the reason why I'm big on that is because I truly believe until you know, you know, what makes somebody tick, how can you say you know somebody, right? Yeah. Like you and I have had many, many private conversations about like deeply about ourselves and, mm-hmm. and what we, what we, you know, live for and what makes us tick and everything like yeah. that. But I can't say that I know Anna if I don't know all of those things, of right? Course. And so, and that's even with friendship, relationships, whatever, is that, you know, I, I truly believe if I can't, if that person can't open up at some point and yeah kind of quickly into it because I want to know what I'm getting myself into, right? Like yes. that that's the other thing. I need to know I need to know what you've been through in order to kind of learn why you do certain things, right? Yes, and I think that that's something that I have actually heard multiple times from people is that I do not show my ugly and that that does that makes them feel like they can't actually know me. And that's coming from partners and I think that maybe that's why I'm a little bit more comfortable with people that are private because I know that I'm not withholding things out of, you know, shame and secrecy, but because I have to trust you fully for me to know that I can be human around you and I can have a bad day without scaring you off. Yeah. I think, I think sometimes the way I look at it is like, if I'm being my human self though, and that scares you off, like what are, what are we doing? Right. Like five steps ahead of most people though, (laughs) including myself in that. Well, I I think it's, it's just something that I've learned over uh, for a long time is that, you know, I I used to try to be perfect with everything. And and now I'm like, I actually want people to understand why I'm doing some of the things that I do. Like even for example, um, last night I went out to eat with two of my buddies and we got barbecue. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had a waiter take a photo of the three of us. Right. Mm -hmm. For two reasons. One, uh, one of the guys lives in Nevada, and so we don't see him all the time. And so yeah. it's nice to have a photo of the three of us together. And then I posted on social media to show that, like, this is what a normal night for Mark looks like. It's totally. not, you know, I think sometimes people look at my Instagram, especially in the past, and they would look at it and be like, oh, this dude's probably constantly hanging out oh, with I chicks. Oh, I was going to ask you in, about this. Yeah, yeah, hanging out with chicks in bikinis, and, like, they're doing this and doing that. Pull yeah. that down a little bit. Um, doing this and doing that. And, uh, you know, and that's not the case. Like most of the time when I'm, you know, even when I'm chilling with you or whatever, like last weekend we were watching NFL playoff games and we're sitting there drinking beer and eating nachos and shit. And like that's, and so we, you know, I post a photo of that because I want to see, I want people to see what the real truth of the matter is. Like it's, it's not so glamorized. It's a normal, like normal people doing normal shit. And so, you know, I'm always big though with when it comes back to bring this full circle of being transparent about why I'm doing these things so that somebody understands it. And so that they don't put their own, like, Oh, maybe he is super self self-absorbed and he wants people to know that he's with Anna and Brooke. Cause he wants to look cool. And it's like, no, 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 I don't want to look cool. I don't, I give don't a, think they're cool at all. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't give a shit. It's, I want people to see that because I want them to know that like, these are normal people doing yes. normal shit and that we're friends. And like, this yes. is what friends do. And you know, we literally sat there for hours just talking about football and drinking beer and in you know people watching and and having fun and it's yeah. like that's a normal you know that's what friends do you know and, sure. and and so i think 
it's it's a battle of like I understand the privacy end of things, and I look at it as kind of like an orange flag in that category because yeah, I, I, or, I forgot that was an option. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. do orange. Yeah, because you want you know you want people to open up, and but yet you know I do respect people that have a certain privacy about themselves, um, and ex- if it's on social or whatever it's on, but like obviously when we're one on one, you need that person to be transparent because otherwise, how can you get to know them? You know. Also, because I feel like this kind of goes with that, not to interrupt your game, but um, I've always wondered how it would feel to be a photographer just trying to date a normal girl because you are shooting with some of the hottest people, period. So if you're even one of those beautiful girls that wants to date you, I could see how that would feel very intimidating and that would make you very insecure but that's only because that person then doesn't know the reality of what's really happening at these photo shoots. Yeah. And that's something that I've dated people that are in my industry. So I don't have to walk them through it, which has been nice. But then some people that have not been, and it's up for interpretation, like in their, their imagination is running wild when they see me posting, you know, a hot bikini photo and I'm shooting with a guy. What's that behind the scenes looking like? Right. And in their head, it's like a lot of flirtation. It's a lot hotter. And like, I don't even want to know what's going on in their brains. Yeah. When in reality, it is as professional and businesslike as possible. I mean, with you, I've never even seen you look below the chin. Never, ever. Never below the chin out of respect. <laughs> Seriously, ever. And I, it's like these women, I'm looking below the chin on these women and I'm a straight female. Yeah. So it's like you keep things so respectful. And that's not always the case for a lot of photographers but I'm just wondering how that has affected things for you. I mean, I I hate how photographers all get lumped in together because I don't look at my actions and, and think, okay, just because I do things this way that this person automatically does things that way. Like, not. not at all. And I think a lot of times you see the stories of like, you know, this photographer was busted having a hidden camera in his bathroom. Yeah. And it's like, and it makes me despise this industry, to mm-hmm. be honest, because I'm like, damn, there's so many fucking weirdos out there. But then the thing I always tell myself is like, okay, Mark, at some point when you're done, the shitty part about that is I know when someone's doing a photo shoot with me that they're like safe, right? For sure. At some point when I'm no longer doing this, the part that does bother me is like, damn, am I, am I opening people up to situations where they then could get hurt because I'm not the one taking the photos then and there's somebody else taking those and I don't know how that photographer is, and right? And their guard's down because they could do those things around you but not necessarily the next guy. Right, and so... The shitty part is, you know, I do think obviously with like the Me Too movement and everything mm-hmm. like that, that you're seeing a lot more, uh, a lot more men realize that they have to fix their fucking actions and that what they've mm-hmm. been doing is completely not acceptable. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that that scares a lot of people and future photographers from ever doing some of the crazy shit that you read about a lot. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what I'm hoping for in terms of like, you know, me personally and everything like that. I try to be as, once again, transparent as possible and um, and try to be, you know, I want people to see the real me of what I'm like and what my conversations with somebody like you are like. Because, yeah, I do think people create their own narrative in their head of like sure. what they think a photo shoot looks like. And the shitty part is, you know, if someone says to me, hey, Mark, I'm booking you for this photo shoot and I want you to take this lingerie photo of me. That's not me saying that I want to take that lingerie photo. You're I'm, I'm being paid to take that photo. Yes. And if I don't take that photo, somebody else will. I got bills to pay. So sometimes you have to do that. And and then I think you get lumped into, well, is that what he wants to take, right? And so what I've tried to do, and it goes back to our conversation earlier where I said in years past, I realized, okay, if I post this photo where there's more cleavage or whatever, I'm going to get more engagement on social media, Mm -hmm. but yet that may not be my favorite photo, but I'm having to post it because of engagement, right? Mm -hmm. Now my mindset has shifted to, I don't give a shit. I don't want people thinking that that's my favorite photo just because I know it'll do well engagement wise. I want to post something because I love it. And if, if it doesn't get a lot of engagement, if it gets a hundred likes, I don't give a fuck. Like I'm doing it for me now instead of doing it for other people, which is what I used to do of let me just appease everybody else. Let me just post this photo, you know, whatever. Let me get that engagement. And now I'm like, I don't want people to come into meeting me with preconceived notions. I want people to see the real me. I want people to see what I actually like, you know? And that was a big part of why I did the podcast and everything is for people to actually get to know me more on a deeper level and not just see me as Mark, that dude with that camera, right? Content producer, yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, and I've, I've said this before, I think... Uh, photographers are the only one of the only careers where you're lumped into your job all the time. People, people can't separate. And I know there's people could mention other jobs and I know there's plenty of others where you get lumped into it, but like, 
if I was an accountant, no one would give a shit, no. right? But yet, obviously, as a photographer, you know, you're always lumped into your job. And I'm yeah. like, man, there is well, a like separation. Being an athlete or a model. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's it's your image 24-7. It's your brand. Yeah. Yeah. And yet there's other aspects of you that make that, you know, make you you. So that's where I've shifted to, you know, where in years past, maybe I was more private. Now I'm more public of not more. I'm wide open because I'm like, hey, you want to know anything about me? I'll tell you anything. And I, I can't help but think that, you know, the next people that are so lucky to date us, um, they're going to be self-aware enough and know us on a deep enough level that they're knowing that we don't go to a situation seeking a connection. Yeah. So I'm not going onto a photo shoot hoping I think the photographer is hot and I'm hoping he's think he, he thinks I'm hot. I'm right. just trying to get this content, pay, and then leave. Yeah. And then, I mean, in our, I've created friendships with All photographers. Right. I have never created a, uh, a, a connection with them that's right. remotely romantic. Yeah. So I think if you were, if I were to date somebody and I hope that I date somebody that's not in this industry, even if they want to tag along for a photo shoot, just so they can see the dynamic of it, see how business-like it is. I think you bringing a girl along to the shoot so she can see exactly yeah. what it's like. I think that could be helpful, but I think past that there has to be a lot of trust and faith that it's they right. know exactly what they're signing up for. Right. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, obviously if, if you're worried about the person that you're dating, cheating then you're probably not dating the right person because yes. I mean, truly at the end of the day, like I've always said, I'm like, if you know me, like, you know how I am. Never and, gonna and, cheat. And yeah. And so it's like, you know, I, I, people have to, you know, trust the person that they're with. And if you don't trust the person that you're with, it's never going to work. So like, why are you dating that person to begin with? If they want to cheat, they can cheat at the grocery store. They can cheat on an app. People yeah. will find a way you either are like that or you're not. And you and I just happen to be people that are not like that and yeah. never will be. Yeah. I mean, I view, I view cheating as like the ultimate, like the most disrespectful per disrespectful thing that you can do to somebody yeah. because you're consciously making this decision to slap that person in the face, right? Because yeah. they've put their love and trust into you and then you're basically saying, fuck that trust, fuck that love, I don't give a shit. And that is so beyond disrespectful. So if you can do that to somebody, I don't even want to be friends with you. Like if one of my yes. guy friends did that to somebody or a girlfriend did that to somebody, Bye. I don't want to be friends with you because I don't trust you at that point because you have so little respect then for the person People. that you're supposed to love the most. So if you have that little little respect for them what the fuck do you have for me and that's correct when it comes to integrity but like even past that i think it's probably the weakest thing you can do yeah that you are so overcome with you just have no control over a desire that you yeah. are so weak that you have to give in to that or you're so insecure that you need your ego stroke like yeah. i don't think a lot of people realize that it comes off like pathetic yeah versus cool that they could you know get so many people you and i could get so many people but we're not doing it because that's not what we want and we don't need our ego stroked in that manner yeah and we also would never intentionally hurt a human being yeah i, I, I like i said it's just weak yeah yeah people i mean anybody who does any of that sh sort of shit pathetic to me so uh, we don't need to put them on this on list that, that's yeah. huge that's, <laughs> that's beyond red, red flag. flag that's red like flag. a black flag yeah. that's even further yeah. um okay so let's see here um doesn't post you ever on instagram red flag yeah 100% red flag. Um, I, Especially if they're active. Yes, if you're active, 100%. As someone who literally should not post a boyfriend for the sake of looking single because of the brand, the image that I have created, I will post every single person that I date because they are a massive part of my life. They are who I am with on the weekends. They are who I am going to the movies with. And if I'm posting them at the movies, I'm going to show who I am attending that movie with. I yeah. would be doing with a girlfriend if I am dating you, I am not hiding you. And I expect that in return, not for the sake of like insecurity, but out of the sake of like, then like, what are you trying to portray and what are you trying to get out of this? Yeah. Like, I just think being upfront is necessary. Yeah. I mean, one of my buddies started dating somebody uh, many, many years ago. And at one point I said to him, I was like, so when are you going to post her on Instagram? And he was like, bro, you don't have to post somebody on social media for it to be a fucking legit relationship, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, yeah, but here's my thing. You're with her all the time. Yeah. You post a lot of other shit that you're doing. It's a get out of jail free card if you don't post that person on social media because nobody then knows that you're dating anybody. So the people in the past that you've hooked up with that follow you on Instagram, you've always got that little get out of jail free card that Back if you plan. Yeah, if you decide to end things with this person, those other people never even knew you were talking to somebody or dating somebody, no right? No explanation necessary. Yeah. And so I said to him, I was like, listen, if you're not that into it, then end the damn relationship. Yeah. But like, if you're into it, then like, then you need to post her because once again, you're with her all the time. So like, own it. And yes. you know what he did? 
half hour later, posted oh, her on Instagram. And yeah. then ever since, you know, and, and they have a loving, great relationship, right? Because I think that that is a product of a grass is greener mindset where yeah. it's like you're holding out for something that could be better in any way, shape or form. And if you are with somebody, you're committed to somebody, there are how many people in this world and you've decided to be with that one person, be proud of that. Oh yeah. They, they are special enough that you said, I cannot pass this person up. I have to be with this person. So then be proud. Yeah. It doesn't have to be daily. It doesn't even have to be weekly. But if you are posting regularly, throw them in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, for anyone who's listening to this who knows me personally, like I've been single for a super long time. And that's because for a long time, I wanted to get my career figured out so that sure. like somebody knew what they were getting themselves into by dating me and, yeah. and all of that. And then also for a while, I was, I don't know, probably scared to get hurt. And so I didn't put myself out there. Yeah. And, and you know, the way I look at it is exactly what you just said of like, when I am dating somebody at some point, I'm going to be proud to be dating that person. And I want to be transparent about who they are and what they're all about. And I want, you know, yeah, I, I want to show that person off. It's like that, uh, that Will Smith and Jada Pinkett, uh, photo where he's going like yes, that. I know. Now I their relationship it. is fucking weird, but like That's that photo, show. it that, went viral for a reason. Yeah. That photo is great. That photo is great. And so, you know, it's, that's the way I look at it is like, if you're dating somebody, be proud of dating that, that person. And if for whatever reason you're not proud, maybe there's a reason why you should probably end that relationship. Yeah. Cause you know, I think if you're not proud of the person you're dating, there's some deeper issues there. And also then what kind of person are you? Right. You know? Right. So, okay. Uh, next one. If they want to know everything about your past sex life, a uh, red flag. And why is that? Because I think that you do not owe anyone anything. It is your personal life. Um, what you did before them, they are not owed an explanation of. And the same goes for, I don't want to know what they've done. As long as they're not doing anything illegal or like they have a kink or something that's like a little <laughs> bit scary and yeah, suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not kink shaming at all, but I'm just yeah, saying no. like, if you have, if there is something there that's illegal or it's dangerous, then you can be honest about that or should be honest about that. But if you are just having a normal sex life and you haven't done anything insane and let's say you haven't wrecked a marriage, yeah. there are certain things that I do think you should be honest about. If you have cheated on somebody, um, if you have wrecked a marriage, uh, because that's not just physical. That is a, it's a value system that's going along with that. Yeah. Other than that, I don't give a crap about your number. And if you ask for mine, that's a red flag. Yeah. It's a control thing. It's like basically signing up for, are you clean enough or are you, um, uh, it's, it's not even like it's past decisiveness. It's not, it's like, you should be able to see how picky they are in their integrity through and through in other facets of life. It shouldn't matter what their number is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you on that. The thing that I do think you should be transparent about when you're in a relationship is what you're into because yes. to see, make sure those things align. Cause there are yes. some people into some crazy shit and there are some people who are into some other things and some that's like, not crazy, but maybe it's just different. Like if someone was like, yo, I want to suck your toes. I would be like, no, no, that's not happening. And, and yeah. I'm sure as hell not doing that to you. Oh, so. I psychoanalyze you. I <laughs> yeah. feel like you do realize why you like that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like if somebody's into that, all power to them, but like, I'm not, I'm not doing that and I don't want yes. that done to me. And so let's be transparent about what we like and everything, but like past, past relationships and all that shit. Like, I don't need to know about it. If there's something you want to tell me by all means, once again, open book, tell me whatever. Yeah. Um, but you know, outside of that, yeah, when someone wants to know, yeah. you know, specific details, sometimes I'm like, all right. Less I know, the better. Yeah. I don't want to leave any room for imagination. I'm just going to assume you've had sex with a ton of people. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to move on. The, the only thing that I will say, though, is if you've hooked up with somebody and for whatever reason, like the person that you're dating is going to meet that person. That's I, different. I do believe you should obviously very much in that situation tell that person so that they know what they're getting themselves yes. into and so they don't find out afterwards because that is disrespectful. I have been in that position with one particular boyfriend where I had to meet like three different girls um, who were just then strictly platonic friends, but it not necessarily with one, one still kind of had feelings. And then yeah. it put me in a position of being the fool. And I think that's like my number one thing, even when it comes to cheating and just certain respect things, it's like, I don't want to come off like the person, the last person that's in the know. Yeah. I want to, I don't want to come off foolish. I want you to feel like we have something secure and strong enough that you can say, Hey, I used to hook up with so-and-so and now it's nothing. Right. And then I can go along like a normal, you know, mature adult and be polite to that person and not have to feel like, oh, that explains why they were really, really mean to me when they first met me. Right, right, right. Which yeah. is what I've had to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Um, so speaking of that then, friendly with his exes. I think that's incredible. I think there's a difference between being friendly and being amicable versus, you know, texting a little too often. I right. think that if you 
have had sex and a romantic connection, um, especially long term. But if you've had that sort of situation with somebody, it is I personally would never get back together with anybody that I have dated. Yeah. But that's not the case for a lot of people. Um, and I think that it kind of leaves the door open and, you know, there, you built a connection, you had chemistry at some point in time. I do think it's appropriate to kind of sever that in a daily relationship, but I do think that it's like, I like the idea of knowing if I really needed that person, I know they'd have my back, but they're not going to be who I reach out to because they're not in my life anymore. Right. Just having it be amicable is very, very attractive. And I think it's a red flag if a man is, has God awful endings with every single one of them for the same reasons. Right, right. And and I would I would agree with that too. I mean, if you have if if every one of your relationships ends in this like horrid way, like mm-hmm. to me it's like, damn, why is that? Like yeah. in, unless there's some and I think that's more I don't know. I don't feel like there's a lot of women that are like the ones that cause these like nasty, nasty breakups. No. Let's be real. It's usually the dude's actions. Sure. So I don't really have to worry about that as much as you would have to in that yeah. situation. But yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, if you see one of your exes, like, I think it's weird to not say like, hi, if you're like oh, randomly yeah. somewhere and like, I mean, yeah, like say hi, whatever. doesn't mean you need to then go have a two hour conversation with that person one on one, but like, you know, to not say hi to somebody or whatever, like that to me is strange. But, yeah. um, so have respect for people that have yeah. had, you um, uh, you know, roles in your life in the past or whatever. Um, and then obviously to a, to a certain degree. And unfortunately that respect is kind of taken away if they have done something that is incredibly hurtful or painful. Right. And right. I yeah, think, of course. And I, cause as I said that I felt kind of silly because you know, you broke up for a reason and in some situations there, are, there is cheating and a lot of lying and pain in that involved. situation, fuck that person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's how I take it after I've, if I've dated you and you have done something that has treated me as if I am the equivalent of trash, I am not going to even, you don't exist anymore. Yeah, And yep. I do, I know that that, I, that is something that I've had to deal with where I cut people off so much. It's like, it wasn't even a chapter of my life, but that is a coping mechanism. And that's because they caused a great deal of pain. Yeah. But with that being said, if you had the luxury of a nice amicable split, I think that's very attractive. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And then uh, let's see, likes your photos, but then you notice after a day or two, he unlikes the photo. Red flag. Why? That's weird. People do that shit. It's weird. It's oh, very strange. Okay, I have it because that's then that to me would be like I'm trying to get your attention, but then I don't want someone to see that I liked it. Yeah. Which I think is I think unfortunately I I know I feel so bad for the next guy I date if he is like very active on Instagram because I know I've been cheated on so frequently in that you being a platform in which it happens. I think a lot of people have yeah. because it's very accessible. It's like basically having a dating app without having to have this not the stigma but get in trouble for having that app. Yeah. You have the same exact access, if not more. Um, we live in a time now where you can slide into celebrities DMS. If you see a hot girl on a TV show, you have as much access to her as the next person. Yeah. Um, so I know the ways in which a lot of people try to get attention and cheat. I think a lot of girls do. Um, and I think it's really silly when guys play the card of like, it's not like that. Or I like every girl's photos or I'm supporting a friend, like every BS response I've ever gotten. It's like, if you have someone saying, Hey, this means this to me. Can we do something to respect that? As long as it doesn't come off controlling and it's completely understandable, then that's fair if that's who you're committed to. And I think doing the like and unlike thing, you're not even in a real relationship with them then. Right, right. Well, and I, I'm not even saying necessarily if you're in a relationship, that might be if you're like talking to somebody oh, or whatever. Run. But like to me, it's like if you're, hey, if you're going to like somebody's photo, like own it. Like, if, you know. You're it's hiding something if you're taking it away. Yeah, I mean, these, so all these things that I'm listing, I literally went on to Reddit earlier today and like Google, and searched uh, orange flag, red flag, yeah. green flag to see what sort of things people put up there. I'm now realizing av- as I'm like going through these, most of these are like red, red flags. flags yeah. But the, um, but it was funny because I didn't even realize a lot of these things were like, I mean, like the like your photo and then, you know, unlike it. That yeah. was a super common one. I like, didn't realize it, that was a thing. Yeah, damn, it was posted like 10 times. There was a, there was like 700 comments in this. I was, I was very deep in this Reddit thread until I destroyed my phone. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. And then, um, okay, we'll go on to the next one. So having very few platonic women friends. Um, orange. I don't, I wouldn't put too much weight on that. I think it's cool. But once again, one of my least favorite or worst exes had a ton of girlfriends. Yeah. So it's like, and that is something that I don't have an issue with. I like it when a man has his girlfriends. I don't care if they're super hot or not. I think that I do find uh, that's okay with me. Yeah. 
Um, but if they don't, if they have a ton of guy friends, that's cool too. That's something I don't put a lot of weight on. Yeah. The only thing that I would say is that I think it is, it, it's always strange to me because obviously I have a lot of platonic women friends. And so I do think when like buddies of mine don't have any, Weird. I'm like, bro, you need to have some because sometimes you need a woman's opinion on something that For you sure. don't want to ask me about because like I'm a guy and it, uh, there's certain things I can't relate to. And so you need to have those friends and it, and it's good to show that you can have a platonic relationship yeah. with somebody who's good looking, you know? Yeah. And cause to me, it's like, you know, there's, that's, I always say one of my favorite aspects of my job is that I'm, I'm basically numb to good looks because like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm around good looking people a lot when I'm doing photo shoots. And so I, yeah, I'm very desensitized to it. And so, you know, that's something where I really look at somebody based off their character and who they are and things like that. And so I have these women friends that, you know, you and I have known each other for four years and it's, it's always been a platonic friendship. Yeah. And that's what makes our friendship great is like, I look forward to when I'm dating somebody, having them meet you and, and vice versa. And so, you know, obviously with my job and obviously your job, like you meet a lot of people of the opposite sex and you develop those platonic relationships. But, you know, for people who don't have any, I mean, most careers even like you're, you're interacting with the opposite sex. So like if, sure. you, if you have no platonic women friends, it's a bad sign. Yeah. I'm semi concerned. Yeah. Uh, and also because you need to have, it's, it's kind of like evidence of the fact that you don't sexualize someone just because they're the opposite sex or right. whatever sex, you know, you're attracted to, but like, just because they're there, you're not sexualizing them, which is something that I know a lot of girls are hyper aware of is every single girl that walks into the room. Is that going to be a potential not threat? Cause that makes it sound like an insecurity problem, but are you going to pursue them just because they're the gender that you like? Right. Um, so I think having somebody that is the opposite sex, I do find it attractive, but if they don't have a ton, I don't care. Yeah. And I, and I think it goes both ways. Like, you know, I, I don't give a shit if the girl that I'm dating is, is friends with a guy who's like, who if maybe I'm like, Oh yeah, that's a good looking brother. Like yeah. he's better looking than I am or whatever. I don't give a shit. Like if I have to wonder if you're going to cheat on me with him, then obviously we have a trust issue and that's the bigger problem. Yeah. But like, Outside of that, like you've got your friends. I'm not, I'm not trying to act like you don't have any opposite sex friends. Like, of course you're going to. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, you know, if anything, I want to meet them and it yeah. goes back to the whole, like, I want to meet your friends. Cause I want to know, are they the shitty friends? Or are they good friends? You of know? Of course. And like, I, I happen to have a ton of dude friends now that I think about it. And it's like most of the time my friends, I mean, they're engaged or they're married yeah. and then I become close with the guy as well. Yeah. So I like, cause I, it's, it's. I guess it sounds silly because it's making it sound like a girl can't, you know, do it all or like it all. But I do think hanging with the guys is different than hanging with the girls. It's the same with you. Like, yeah. I'm sure watching the game with Brooke and I the other day was maybe different than it is with the guys or maybe not. Weirdly similar. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I did was post on my IG story. What did I say? Like talking football boys. with the bros or something like oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, for me, it was it was I'm used to my like three best guy friends yeah. uh, have all lived in LA and two of them recently just moved. And then one of them is on a, uh, he's on a trip to, where is he right now? Chile. He's in Chile. Amazing. Um, yeah, he's going, he's, I didn't know this is, I'm gonna sound really fucking dumb. Yeah. I didn't know Patagonia was a le legit place. Yeah. It's not just like a company. Yeah. For Jack. Yeah. Whole dumbass here. Yeah. Uh, very <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy you said it. <laughs> very beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah, but I, I started, he was like, I'm going to Patagonia. And I was yeah. like, like that headquarters he's like mark the location and i was like <laughs> the outlet store i'm like where where is that and then he's like it's like chile and i think mm -hmm. it borders argentina or some shit like yes. that geographically challenged here mm -hmm. uh but looks beautiful he's there and so yeah watching the game with you guys last weekend was was very was yeah was a hoot it was a, a great time yeah. um and the uh ahi nachos that we had oh, at, at pokey nachos what, what was that place called yard house um mm. yeah god highly recommend highly Absolutely. recommend 10 out of 10 mm -hmm. um okay and last one hasn't dated anyone in a while um, God, I think that might be a good thing because that's that. I mean, it depends on the reasons once again, so that's an orange flag, but like serial monogamous that could point to someone that can't be alone. Someone that's codependent, yeah. um, someone that's forever alone, avoid an attachment, unfortunately. And, but that can be a recipe of trust issues, been hurt, been cheated on. Um, maybe they're pursuing their career whole, whole, oh, I can't even speak wholeheartedly. Um, so I think if the reasons behind it are something that's understandable, such as I was with somebody, I was engaged and they cheated on me with my best friend. I could see how you need to take a year off, you know, <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. feel like you found the one and then they, you know, absolutely destroyed, you know, the course of what you thought right. your life was going to look like. It takes time to heal and you should be taking that time to heal. I speak from someone that has been in one long relationship after another. I think that that's more bizarre than taking time to be alone. Yeah. I think because that points to me just wanting a partner. And that is why I've made a concerted effort to 
be alone and focus on my career and be by myself because you only have you at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I was, so I've always said I have a theory and I could be wrong in this, but I have this theory that every person who is single, Mm -hmm. uh, so both of us, right. Mm -hmm. Um, has a negative reason as to why they're single. Right. Okay. And that, and that sounds weird, but the reason why I say that is because for some people, uh, maybe it's that they, they look for the wrong attributes in people. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, maybe it's that they are, um, you know, maybe they're not taking enough time to look for the right one mm-hmm. and they're kind of settling, right? Um, everybody has some negative reason. Like for me, I can say my, my negative reason would be that for too long, I put so much focus on my career that I didn't even attempt to date uh, sure. to the point where my mom would ask my sister, like, hey, is Mark telling you that he's going on dates? Because like, he's not telling us shit, right? Yeah. And uh, and it was like, no, I wasn't. And then finally it took buddies of mine saying to me like, holy shit, dude, you got to try to put yourself out there, sure. you know? And, and it's like, you know, I, I needed to do that, but for so long I was, you know, afraid to get hurt slash, you know, focusing so much on my career that I didn't focus on relationships at all. And so, you know, it's like that negative reason would be that for a long time, I didn't have a a good balance. Right. And now I feel like I have a really good work-life balance, but I needed to main to, to get that. And, you know, and so I think everybody has that reason and, you know, and I think, there's, you have to figure out what that reason is for the person that you're talking to. Cause I feel like a lot of times, you know, especially with, with dudes, I think every time, like, you, you know, obviously there's a lot of guys that are probably the primary reason why, why yeah. uh, the relationship ended. Right. Sure. And then, you know, they come out with every sob story. She broke my heart. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, it, she and was it's crazy. Yeah. She was. Oh, really? oh, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always say to my guy friends, like, dude, anytime you're like, that chick is crazy. First of all, she's not. Second oh, of all, God. That that action that caused you to think that she's crazy was caused. Yeah, you was idiot. was caused by well, either you or somebody from her past, right? Yeah. So like, figure out figure out what that is. If it's something that you've done, obviously stop whatever the fuck you're doing. And if it's something from her past, once again, you need to foster an environment where they feel comfortable to express what they've been through. Because sure. once again, if you don't know what somebody's been through, then you're never going to be able to understand why they do the things that they do. You need to get to know that to a certain level, right? And, yes. So, In fact, if I was on a date with a dude and I asked, why did your last relationship end? And the guy even touched on she was crazy and insecure. I would probably say it was really nice meeting you. And then no. I'd get up and leave because every single guy that has ever said those words to me or about an ex yeah. has ended up being somebody that has such toxic behavior on their end that your response to that behavior makes you upset or sad. And then because you had that human reaction emotion, you're then labeled as crazy. Do you not know the definition of being insane? Right, right. Like someone being hurt that you liked a girl's photo in lingerie and then continue to do it after you said, hey, it hurts my feelings or you flirted or you turned your phone off at a, you know, a night out. If you're doing those things and the girl's upset, stop labeling, labeling her as crazy and start being like, okay, maybe I'm doing things that make someone feel crazy. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Always look inward before you look outward. So 100%. All right, next up, we're going to do um, kind of... Um, some date questions slash we're going to go with a good date first, uh, first dates, good date or bad first date idea. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. Going to the movies, but grabbing food beforehand. I think I'm just like kind of anti movie first date anyways. I think doing something, I don't go to the movies in general, so that's not an organic date for me, but I do think just if I was in a, I just, just get the meal, right? Just get the meal, get the, get the coffee. You don't need to throw in an activity afterwards. Yep. I would agree with that. The uh, next one, going on a hike together. Uh, you're going to be out of breath. One's going to be in front of the other. Um, that is not a date that I'd want to go on for a first date. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. Not even a little bit. Not even a fifth date. Maybe fifth date for me. I mean, I, I like, I think you can, obviously, if you're enjoying some beautiful view and everything like that, maybe not the most strenuous hike right off the yes. road, rep- you know, if you're uh, like my buddy in Argentina right now or Chile, God, I can't remember where he's at. Chile, yeah. he's doing some crazy hiking right now. That wouldn't be a first date. No. But that, the, and that's what I'm picturing is something yeah. grueling where it's like, yeah. you know, you're, you're seeing how unathletic somebody is. I would rather go camping. Like, what's, what's the big hike here? Oh, Runyon that all the Runyon. Like that. On. That's like that's not a, a real hike. That's an easy, easy breezy, one. Easy yeah. but there's no shade, so you're right, sweating true. and you're smelly. True, 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 true. Mm-hmm. But like this time of year, it's you know it's a little yeah, cooler yeah, out there. You know, you got a point. You got yeah. a point. That was eighty five ninety. No, what are we doing? If you are a boy that's interested in me and you're listening to this, please do not take me on a hike for the first date. <laughs> I beg of you. All right, getting coffee. Love it. There we go. Uh, going to an event like a concert. Um, I love that. Uh, one of my, like my dream date 
I mean, okay. My dream first date would be to tailgate and then go see a football game together. Okay. Yeah. Because then you're seeing them interact with other people, your friends, uh, in a very like, it's like a no pressure setting. I feel like you yeah. can have a drink. Uh, not all eyes are on you. It's not formal sitting across the table. You can see how fun they are, how much they fit into your life. I like that sort of situation. Yeah. And I would say I like what you're saying more than than this suggestion of the concert because I feel like when you go to a, a football game or something like that, there's still opportunity to talk and, and yes. things like that. When you're at a concert, it's pretty loud. It's dark. You're like, you're not really getting to know that person. If we're yes. talking about a, at a date you know, setting, it's hard to get to know somebody when you're you know singing Taylor Swift together. Also, if I'm at a concert, if I'm purchasing tickets to go to a concert, that means I care enough about that band to actually want to right. listen to it. And I will be pissed at you if you're trying to talk over some red hot chili peppers. Right, right. Is that your go-to? That's not my go-to, but they are coming to SoFi Stadium in July. There you go. And I will be there. There we go. Um, all right. And then going to grab food or drinks at a trend. I mean, that's okay. I yeah. don't even know why I put that. Yeah, yeah. food and dinner. <laughs> yeah, food and dinner. Food and drinks at a restaurant. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is there a certain place or a certain type of food? I'll just pivot off this. A certain type of food that you don't like grabbing on a first date. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it's, it's the gross, it's the gross reality, but some chicks, they have sensitive bellies. So if you're taking them to like Thai food, Himalayan food, like right off rip. Yeah. You, you might, know, whew. you got to figure out if they're lactose intolerant. There's yeah. certain, there's certain questions you got to touch upon. And I think like being older, I'm going to feel much more comfortable saying that's a no, that's yeah. a no for me. Or I'll meet you at the restaurant. And I'm driving myself home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's uh avoid the spicy, you know, those sort of foods maybe at first. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. So work up to that. Yeah. Work up to that. Anything that's super saucy. I got an upset stomach. So yeah. anything super saucy, I, not great for me. Yeah. So I would Just definitely sensitive bellies. Yeah. Everywhere. Definitely avoid that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So then I have a few more questions that are just kind of random things, kind of pivoting off some of the stuff we've talked about. So when do you start talking about future oriented questions with somebody that you're dating? Okay. So this is something that I learned as of recent after talking to my best friend, because I have, I, the last thing I ever want to come off as is crazy. And like, where do you see us in five years when it's like, we don't even know each other. We don't know if we like each other yet, Yeah. but there is very much a difference between knowing what you want for your future versus knowing what you want with that specific person in the future. So if I'm sitting there and I ask you, do you want to get married? I am not asking you, do you want to marry me? Right. It's, do you see that for yourself? And if a man has said, I've never thought about that, or I don't know, depending on what I feel about marriage and kids and things like that, we just might not align or be in very different chapters of our lives. So I think just knowing exactly what you want going into the dating world, like I just want to hook up with somebody. I just want something casual. I'm working a lot or I want to do this in hopes of marriage and children, know exactly what you want going into something so that you can actually answer those questions of like, I want something light and fun. Girls, men, we love honesty. We like transparency. We're actually a lot cooler than you think we are. If you just tell us very early on what your intentions are, there's going to be those few that try to change your mind, but that's their issue. Yeah. But as long as you are very upfront in the beginning of, I want to get married one day or I don't want to get married one day. At least, you know, and there's no confusion later on. Right, right. And I'm, I'm a big believer of, you know, in terms of asking what kind of what you talked about, the uh, asking what they want out of life and where yeah. they see life going, you know, if, especially us living in California, like, do you want to live here the rest of your life or do you yeah. want to go elsewhere? And if you want to go elsewhere, where is that? Like, those are questions that I want to know because I want to know, do we align at all on that? Right. Exactly. And it's not crazy. Right. Right. And I want kids and I want to be a dad. So is that what they want? And if mm -hmm. not like, okay, Hey, we can just be friends and that's cool. Uh, but you know, asking some of those questions that aren't particular about like us, but more of like what they want individually, what For I want sure. individually seeing if you're aligned on that, that I think you can, ask off rip. Um, and then the other questions about like, what are we, I mean, that's that to me, you ask that question, like once you're, once you're an active part of each other's lives in, in terms of like, when you're looking at your week and you're looking at, okay, we're getting together on this day and that day and whatever at that point. Yeah. You feel free to ask what we are. Cause, yes. and I'm always a big believer. Hey, you want to know exactly how I look at you and what I think, you know, we are and what, uh, Hey, ask me anytime friendship, yes. anything. I'll tell you exactly what I think anytime. I think the conversation should kind of happen as soon as you're in a position of someone asks you on a date and you actually start to feel like it would be a betrayal of the person that you're seeing. Right. When things start feeling like it's like an innate loyalty that kicks in. Yeah. I think that is like a nat. That's like the universe or that's your body telling you this is 
time for this conversation. You don't have to approach it in like a crazy way of like, what are we and what are we, you know, right. it can just be a thing of like, I see this with you. Do you see this with me? Right. Right. And then, Hey, if their answer is not something you want to hear, at least you found, at least, you know, now and Sooner can rather than later. Yep. Yep. I think people know or should know a lot faster than they try to make it seem. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I know like, even when it comes to like the kid question, I never wanted kids. That was something I was very a hundred percent sure of. I never wanted children. And then now it's gone to the point where it's like, maybe I don't really want to have kids with the way the world's going, but it's a possibility. So if someone were to ask me, do you want kids? It used to be absolutely not. And now it's a, it's not what I think my purpose is, but it's, it's, it's a maybe for sure. Yeah. yeah. And then that person knows I'm not going to be having their children and, you know, or their child in two years, yeah. but it's something I'm willing to talk about. Yeah. Fair. And then how quickly do you introduce someone to your parents slash your friends? Man. Okay. So friends, I think almost immediately, um, especially my friends are, I mean, it's not, I'm acting like I'm different in this way. My friends are my family and they know me better than literally anyone. I have collected people in LA that somehow know every version of me in every single light. So if they meet somebody that they don't think is a good fit for me, it is not out of pettiness or jealousy, or they've decided that I'm something that I'm not, they know me through and through. So if they see someone that's not a healthy fit for me, I'm going to trust them 100%. I will not necessarily dump them just because they're like, I don't think this is good for you, but I'm going to take note and I'm going to look at exactly what they're pointing out. Yeah, fair. I, I mean, for me, I mean, I've been single for so long that if I'm ready to introduce you to my friends or family, like, holy shit, I really like you because that is something that like, it does definitely make me nervous because I haven't introduced anybody to any, yeah. to any of my friends or, you know, whatever. And, um, and then on top of that, everybody, all of my like close friends do come to me for advice a lot. And so yeah. I always joke, like my, my dating life is a disaster, but like, I, yours. <laughs> but yeah, but I give a lot of advice to people that does tend to usually help. You give the best advice. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm like, you know, I know the moment I introduce somebody to my friends, to all these people that I've given advice mm -hmm. to in the past, that now all of a sudden it's going to be like, Hey Mark, like now we're, we're looking to make sure that you're upholding the same things that you used to tell us to uphold. Right. Yeah. And so and that's are, okay. Yeah. And so Definitely, like I, I, I definitely think you know the moment I know I'm ready to introduce you to those people. Like obviously that says a whole hell of a lot about how I feel about you. And so if I'm ready to do that very quickly, like that that means something, and that's something that I need to self reflect on and realize that person means a lot if I want them to meet these people. And then the opposite too of like if I think oh I don't really want to introduce these people this person to my friends or family, well then. Yeah. I know exactly how I feel. And there's also no argument that love makes you the dumbest version of yourself. So when you introduce that person to your friends, it's almost, it's not that it's not biased, but they are advocating for you in the way in which that maybe you aren't anymore because you're trying to compromise for the sake of being with that person. So if I'm with a human being, that's not necessarily bringing out the best of myself and I'm questioning, Hey, am I good enough for them? I'm bringing them around my friends who think I am, you know, the greatest version that I don't even see myself in the light, whatever. Yeah. And so then they're going to have an opinion of things that I would necessarily, I would be dismissing yeah. or tolerating. Yeah. All right. So last question here, how do you battle not getting complacent as you get older and you want to settle down, uh, but you haven't met the right person yet? <sighs> you know, I used to think my answer of this has changed a lot. Um, especially recently, I think, you know, creating a life that's so full and not settling is number one because you cannot build your world around a human being. And I think that we do romanticize very co codependent relationships where it's glorified in movies, where my world began the day I met you, or I can't breathe without you. I can't function without you. And it might feel nice hearing those things, but it's actually incredibly toxic and a, and a massive issue and something that, you know, go to therapy for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so I think that making your world so full, finding a human being, I think number one for me now would be finding a human being that I could see myself evolving with where they don't love just the specific version of me. And that's why I am not putting myself out there to date necessarily quite yet because yeah. I am not the version of myself that I think I'm going to end up. And I know that we're always, we're ever changing, but to our core, we're, we do remain the same in a yeah. lot of ways. And I do want to meet a man that knows who I am. They love that version of me, but they're also going to love the version of me that becomes more confident that's more self-assured, that congratulates and celebrates myself a little bit more, isn't so self-deprecating. I want to basically be with a man that's going to love the best version of myself that I'm always chasing to become. Right. So I think waiting 
until I meet that person that I'm like, I could see myself loving you next year, five years, 10 years, 30 years from now, because there's something about you that's always wanting to be better. So I think holding out for that, that's everything to me. And I don't know if that really answers your question, yeah, but yeah, I'm, no. I'm in the opposite position of trying to just settle down now. Like I, I want to find something that isn't going to, you know, I don't want to ever feel like I wasted my days. Like even right. when it comes to work and friendship, it's like if I have a meeting in one part of the area or of the city, I'm going to make sure I meet, get lunch with that person. And I'm going to, you know, make an appointment there. Like I maximize every bit of my day. And I think of that even with relationships where it's like, it, it's, it's, I think, I think it co- directly contradicts the grass is greener thing because you could, you could argue that that's the same thing of what I'm saying, but it's not, I'm not chasing someone that's better than you. I am chasing something that is going to love this version of me in the next. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we're always constantly developing. I think you need to get to the point in life where you're very happy with who yourself is and and loving and you truly love yourself. Right. And loving yourself also means self-reflecting a lot and realizing, you know, certain things that we need to constantly work on. And, Mm -hmm. and that's, I'm not talking about major things, right? Like I'm not talking about like, well, I lie a lot, but I'm working on that. I'm going to stop lying. Right. Like that's a, that's a major red flag and like, that's no go. Right. But in terms of like, there's always things that we should be developing as humans, right? Yeah. Listening more, uh, just just being more present. You know, those are things that like is very important to me. And I think the more that you are, you've, you know, that whole like I, I complete you thing or, or you complete me. No, I don't no. want I don't want that because at the end of the day, I want you to complete you. And all I'm trying to do is compliment you. Right. Yeah. It goes back to the whole boom, you know, the Will Smith meme. Right. Yes. And and so, you know, all I'm trying to do is compliment somebody. I don't want to be, you know, the reason why they're a complete. You're already complete. You're a complete person. And so, you know, everybody has their you know, especially as we get older, we all have our our trauma and whatnot from our younger years that we need to deal with and process. And you got to do that. Deal deal with that, process that in any which way that you need to, but get to that point where you're loving yourself completely and, and where you're, you know, once again, where no one's ever perfect, but get to the point where you truly, truly, truly love yourself. And then at that point, when you meet somebody else who truly, truly loves themselves, then you guys compliment each other instead of, you know, without you, I die. Right. It's like, that's a a very unhealthy mindset. I was just about to say the whole thing of like, I've, I've read captions where it's like, I, you know, can't live without you. And to me, that is the last thing I'd want to hear from a partner because I, I romanticize someone choosing me every single day, not needing me. So right. I put myself in a, in a position sometimes with boyfriends where I, I become indispensable because I'm doing chores yeah. or I'm making their life easier. And so they're ultimately, they're choosing someone that's their maid, their therapist, their sounding board, their, you know, whatever laundry doer. Um, and they're not prior or they're not choosing me as an individual. So I think that if you remove the I can't live without you thing because you make my life so damn convenient and I'm also so codependent that I need you to be able to sleep and eat, that's I want to be with somebody that's like I am out of everybody choosing to hang out with you day after day after day because I just want to. You're awesome. Yeah. And I love my life enough that I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't really want to do that because my life is good on its own. Right. And and that's I, so I've been living alone now since I was 23, I think. So mm-hmm. like six years. Yeah. And, um, and I always say like the best part about living alone is that I, you know, I've already completed my life, right? Like I, I do my laundry, I wash the dishes, I take out the trash, I clean the place. Like, you know, Very I do, self-sufficient. yeah, I do everything already on my own. So I'm already like individual mark, right? Yes. So then when I meet somebody else who compliments me, we form a team, right? For sure. And when you have two people that have already like, they're complete people and they, they, they're on the team together. That's when you have the greatest growth together. Right. And you create this incredible life together. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how I view my parents is my parents are both very independent people, but together they have this very, very special relationship that I look at and I love their happiness together and things like that. But they're very independent people. They're uh, completed humans without, you know, they complement each other. They're not, they don't complete each other. Right. And yeah, I think that's just a very healthy thing to get to that mindset where I love me. I'm complete myself and you compliment me. And I love that. And I love that about us Mm -hmm. is that we compliment each other. And that once again, you're not, like you said, you're not with me because you need me to live. You are choosing me because like we, we consciously choose each other because we love spending that much time with each other that like, 
I, I love that time together, but it's not that I need you because you make my life easier because you do the dishes. No, you make my great life even greater. Right, exactly. And I think there's like a compat- compatibility in that in itself. Um, I was going to ask you, but I didn't know if that's going to be one of your questions of like, what are like the top three traits or qualities that you look for in a person that you're going to date or even actually a friend? I would say somebody who truly gives a shit. Like that's probably my yeah. number one. Like, I don't know if I've ever felt that. Like, I don't know if I've ever, I mean, outside of like family and friends, I don't, yeah. I've never in dating any, never experienced that. Yeah. And and so that sucks because I feel like a lot of times I go above and beyond for people and friends, friendships. And I can't even say relationships because I've been so single for so long. You that, give so many shits though. You know, I give a shit. I give a shit about the people that I care about. Yes. And so feeling that in return will be nice. Um, mm-hmm. So that probably be number one. Reciprocation then. Yeah. Good label is that. Yeah. And second thing, communication. You know, yeah. ev- everything in life, you know, for the most part can be talked through, you know. So mm-hmm. how do we communicate? If you have, if we have a disagreement about something, I don't, I don't believe in arguments. I don't have arguments with people. I have disagreements. And if we have a disagreement, let's talk about it. Let's communicate. Tell me why you feel the way you do. I'll tell you the, uh, the way I feel. And then let's come to a resolution. We're not going to brush it under the rug. We're not going to act like it didn't happen. We're not going to wake up the next day and, and be like, oh, well, that was over with. Yeah. No, no, no. We're going to come up with a resolution that we're both happy with and we're going to communicate properly and, and we're going to, and we're going to figure the situation out. So how do you communicate, you know, and that's probably my next biggest. And then third, how you probably, how you interact with other people. Like yeah. when you're talking to the waiter at a restaurant, how do you interact with that person? Sure. If you see a homeless person laying on the street, how do you, what do you say as you walk by or whatever, you know, are you the type of person that's going to do something for that person? Or are you the yes. type that goes like, ew, gross, you know, like how do you, how do you treat, you know, people who can't do anything for you? Yes. I, I judge a lot of that because that yeah. is super important to me. How you treat people that you, that you want around you, I get that, but like how you treat people that can do nothing for you tells me a shit ton about I you. I was just about to say that the way you acknowledge people, or even if you go to the grocery store, if you're on your phone the entire time and you're not answering that question of how was your day, yeah. that person didn't need to ask you anything. Yeah. And I really take note of when men just are on their phones or dismissive or just talking to me. You have a new person in front of you asking you a question, acknowledge them like a human being. Yeah. And it's exactly with the homeless person. That's a great analogy because- I know a lot of people that are only kind to people that they can get something from, and that's including me. So that's not, that's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so to end this, I have a food for thought question, and uh, we'll end that, and then we'll plug your socials, and we'll, and we'll call it a day. So, oh, can we throw in how hot yeah. consistency is? That's like the, yeah. the can we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is like the the thing that as like an adult, I, I would have never said that as my answer, let's say even two years ago, because I wouldn't even known that that was as attractive as it is. Yeah. But knowing exactly who you're signing up for and that if there's a fight or, a, you know, whatever, a disagreement, I don't have to worry about you acting out of character, acting erratic and doing something that's going to then damage us further. Someone that is who they are, they communicate, you know, consistently, they show up when they say they're going to. To someone that is stable and consistent is everything. I've said that. I think you and I have had conversations Multiple about this phone in the calls uh, about yeah, that. about this in the past of like, you just want to know at the end of the day that somebody's going to do what they say they're going to do, and yes. that you're not going to have these random like completely erratic behaviors that you mm-hmm. have to then wonder where the fuck that came from. Like, yes. th- you know, there's times when someone will say to me like, "Oh yeah, like the guy I'm dating is great, but when he's you know when he's drinking vodka, and it's like, no, what the no. fuck? Like, <laughs> I know, yeah, like what the fuck, you know." That doesn't, nobody should act out of character because they're drinking You're or something. You're not Spider-Man. Like, like yeah. you didn't like all of a sudden like change personalities right. or switch skins. Right. right. Like you're, you're, you're you. So yeah. your behavior, you're responsible for your behavior 24 seven. So Without if you're doubt. having a bad day or good day, like just because I broke my iPhone earlier, doesn't mean I get to be a prick to you when you get over here. Like, yeah. no, there's no excuses for any of that. So yeah, consistency in the way that you treat people, consistency in the way that you treat me, mm-hmm. consistency consistency in the way that you follow through on the things that you say that you're going to do and you yeah. actually do them and not, you know, <sighs> if we say we're going to get together on, okay, actually this is a, this is a great thing. One of the times I was in North Carolina, my mom says to me, she goes, well, we're getting together with our, our friends on, on Saturday night or whatever. And this is like Tuesday. Right. Mm-hmm. And so fast forward to like Saturday morning, I was like, oh, so like what time are they coming over tonight? She's like, oh, we haven't even really confirmed that yet. Like I'll, we'll confirm that in a few hours of what time they're coming over. And I was like, oh, you haven't like you know, talked about, yeah, you haven't locked that in. Like, and and she goes, Mark, like we said, we're getting together Saturday night. So whether we get together at seven 30 or seven or seven 45, like doesn't really matter. We're getting together tonight. And we know that. And I was like, but you haven't like 
confirm that. What that if, doesn't work like that in our today's generation. Like it doesn't. People? You have to you have to check in ten times of hey, are we still getting together to, yeah. uh, next week? Are we getting together? Looking forward today? to tomorrow. Yeah, you have to do all that stupid shit. I don't want to do that. I want to know that if you say we're getting together on Friday, we're getting together on Friday. Absolutely. That that to me, yeah, consistency. You nailed that. I'm glad we brought that up because yeah. that is a super important thing. What you see is what you get. Is like that is the most romantic thing to me. Is that. Because my, like, I think my biggest issue when it comes to dating is I think everybody has like a really dark side and I'm really scared of it coming out. So it's like, I, and maybe that's just because of people that I've dated or even the fact that I have a true crime podcast and I'm literally inundating my brain with research of mentally ill people. Yeah. So I think that obviously plays a role in that, but I want to know that there isn't like, everyone has, you know, a negative quality or two. Of course, yeah. but like a darkness about them. Like I want to know exactly what I'm signing up for and I feel safe do you with wanna, that. Do you want to know what my darkness is? You yell fuck when you break your phone. Well, that I do for sure. But That's deep and dark. But I've only broke my phone once. Um, knock on wood. Let's not have that. <laughs> let's not have that happen again. You only get one replacement every 12 months. I've learned this through mm-hmm. Apple Care. Apple Care, go buy. Yeah, um, small print. My darkest quality, I collect trading cards and spend a lot of money on them. Sports trading cards. That's not dark. <laughs> I know, no, I know, like, I like, know there was nothing, yeah. Um, I know somebody that like their worst quality was they liked Christmas music. You know, like that was like their downfall. Well, how often we listen to Christmas music? Like they really like in it. Ju- like in yeah. June are we yeah. throwing oh, no, on that's like mentally. that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, we can't be doing that. Like, but, like just like that sort Last of quality. Christmas. Yeah, like I can't. We can't be doing that in June. No, okay. no. Okay, we get You're, to we get to October. Bad example. Bad maybe? example. That's yeah. really dark. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. And every once in a while, when I watch like a TV show, like you or Dexter or one of those, I'm like, all right, what are you motherfuckers up to? Yeah. What are you up to? Cause I know you got some shit, oh, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, no, it's, yeah, I, I totally agree with all of this. Yep. So, all right. So last thing, like I said, food for thought question. If you had a friend who spoke to you in the same way that you sometimes speak to yourself, how long would you allow this person to be your friend? Mark. Oh my God. It's not rocketed on the mic. No. Oh, gross. I, <laughs> I shit you not. I, I, I think I'm keeping that in there. That's disgusting, but people need to see the real you. <laughs> Which it, it launched itself. I'm going to, Hey, for uh, anybody who's on my podcast in the future, I will clean this microphone the moment we get do. done here. Yeah. A little like mini shower cap yeah, on yeah, it. Got it. Um, got you it. can wash these things actually. We're I'm good. Yeah. Disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how long would my friendship last with somebody that spoke to me the way I speak to myself? Sometimes. Yes. I mean, we, it would be, it'd be a one date, one date wonder yeah. literally. And I, that's, I mean, yeah. When you see all those, you know, inspirational Instagram quotes. So they're like, would you be friends with you? And that sort of stuff. I would be friends with me, but I would not be friends with somebody that spoke to me the way that I speak to myself. Absolutely not. And the reason why I picked out that question for you is because, you know, and we've talked about this before, <laughs> you are, you are very self-deprecating yes. and it's something that I know that you're working on and, and it's important. And I love seeing the, the fact that I feel like you love yourself more now for sure than I've ever seen before. And, you know, and I think that's really important to get to that position where you're constantly talking to yourself in a positive way and constantly loving yourself because I know, you know, how great of a person you are. And I think there's, you know, there have been times where you're not seeing that at that moment and, you know, and getting to that point. And I think that food for thought question is just an interesting way to view it because Mm -hmm. it is really easy to uh, talk bad about ourselves and to knock ourselves and, you know, why, why am I this way? Why am I not, you know, this, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, at the end of the day, you are you and the people who love you and care for you and everything love you the way you are. And the people who don't love you for you, like, well, then fuck that person. Right. And I think it's something that's really important um, to be mindful of because it's taken me 29 years to realize it. But if a partner or um, a friend or a parent or a, a, a coworker is saying things to you about your physical appearance or they're putting you down in any way, shape or form, that is, I mean, I hate, it sounds so hokey, but a direct reflection of them. And you have to be mindful of that because the things that you say to these people, you might think of it as like a one line diss or funny, um, they'll laugh it off, but that could be something that literally sticks with them for six years. I have daily thoughts of, about things that someone said to me when I was a freshman in high school Yeah, and it has, and it's, even if I know it's not the truth, it is always in the back of my brain. And I think that it is our responsibility to be so selective with our words. And I mean, I don't really get offended by a lot of things. And I think that that has been an issue in my relationships because I'm okay with this. So why am I not okay with that? So if they're making fun of my ankles or my forehead or my this or my that, all of a sudden it's like, thanks a lot. You just added 
two more things to the already list of, you know, very long list of things I don't really love. No. So I think being very, very mindful of those like small jokes and look at yourself and think, am I saying this because I don't feel like I deserve that person? Or am I saying that because I actually hate myself? Very, very important yeah. because it affects people. Yeah. And, and the opposite side of that is what you, I actually read this quote earlier today. It was like what you would say about somebody at their funeral tell them while they're alive. Like, and it's 100%. that they see expression of like, give people their roses while they can smell them. Like we're, we're so quick to make jokes and, and negative things about people. Dude, fucking tell people how much you love them and how much yeah. you care about them because you don't know, you know, how long somebody's going to be here. And we've all lost people and, and it fucking sucks. And you never want to have those things that you should have said. You never want to look back mm -hmm. and, and say, I should have said this, or I should have said that. And I didn't. Yeah. And so you know, the people that you care about, fucking tell them how much you For care sure. about and tell them how much you love them because mm -hmm. you don't know when that, when will be the last time that you spend time with them. And so, you know, I, I feel like that's one thing in 2022 that I'm focusing a lot on mm -hmm. is really making sure that I continue to express to people how much I love and care about them, whether as a friend or as a family member or relationship or whatever, or people I work with or whatever, just tell people how much I care about them because yeah. I never want somebody to wonder. And I, and it always makes somebody feel good when somebody just tells you how much they give a shit about you. I, and I already know, like the minute you start saying certain things, I, I'm going to, I will cry during this next part, <laughs> but, um, last year was art was without a doubt the worst year of my life. And I was so, I've always thought of myself as not like an outlier, but like a little bit off, like an offbeat person that like, maybe it's hard for me to connect with people or maybe the way in which I look at myself is very different than the way in which a lot of people have supposedly looked at me. And through middle school, through high school, I've always just kind of felt like I came out a little weird. Yeah. If that makes sense. And yeah. last year, when like when people start treating you a certain way, like you date these people that make you feel like, why can't I get it right? Like I'm doing all the things. Like why am I the human equivalent of trash? Or like I might as well not even be there. Yeah. And then I have these friends and family that like, I put so much weight on men and people who I date looking at me as I'm magical and yeah. hoping that they will when my friends have never stopped. And like, that's something that really gets me emotional because I don't know what I would do if I didn't have those people last year. Yeah. That includes you. Yeah. And it's like, I have been so unbelievably blessed. Yeah. I'm going to give you a hug when we're done with this. Okay. You're, you're too far away right now. <laughs> air, air hug for the meantime. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's important to be there for people because you never know when somebody's going through a hard time and yeah. we, we can sometimes think we know yeah. how somebody's doing and shit, but you never really know. And, you know, I've, I've told people, you know, privately, but June and or July and August were two of the hardest months that I've, yeah. I've dealt with in a, in a long time. And when I finally started telling people like, yo, those were two fucking tough months for me. It felt good to get that off my chest and to know that those people were there for me and everything like that. And, and, uh, you know, and so it, it's important to, you know, once again, give people their flowers and tell people mm -hmm. that you love them because you never know when somebody needs that. For sure. And then, you know, and then to, you know, always remind yourself how great the people are that are in your circle and how much they care about you too. And to realize that if somebody else, whether it's somebody you're dating or working with or, or friends with or whatever, isn't treating you that you know, with as much love and respect as the people who, as you know, all the other people in your life, then that's obviously somebody that you want to, you know, rid yourself of because they don't deserve to have, you know, that special time with you and to spend any moment with you because time is your most valuable resource and who yeah. you choose to spend that time with you know, that's, that's an incredibly that's important what your life ends up looking like your yeah. life is literally how you spend day to day. It's not what it's like when you're on vacation. It's yeah. who you're spending and who you're seeing Monday through Sunday. Right. Like, like money and, and all that shit. Like none of that matters at the end of the day. No. The things that matter are the people that you spend time with. Like, you know, we were talking last night about like, you know, oh, we could go to we wouldn't do this because it's not really our style, but like we could go to like a nightclub and get a table and you're dropping a thousand dollars minimum. I don't even know what tables go for a lot of money and, and you're getting that, but you're not even enjoying yourself. And, and last night it's like, we got barbecue and some beers and then went to another bar and just had another, like went to this shitty bar and had a beer there too. And it was just good vibes and good times. And like, that's you, a dream date right there. Yeah. Except it was three bros, <laughs> Whatever. <but> three bros <laughs> just enjoying each other's company. But yeah, it's like, that's the shit is just, you know, the, the, 
the fluffy stuff in life doesn't fucking matter. What matters at the end of the day is human connection, uh, whether with family, whether with friends, whether with relationships, just having great human, human connection. And when there's somebody in your life that you realize isn't, you know, giving you that, that love and support that you need, you know, then that's somebody who doesn't deserve to be in your life. And, you know, and, and, uh, the sooner you read that, the sooner you get to that point where you're, you know, loving every day, you know, and, and we're all always going to have bad days, but those, you know, the, they get fewer and farther between the more that you surround yourself with love and, and people who are truly, truly there for you and, you know, and, and bring out the best in you. Yeah. And I think like acknowledging the people that have not left your side. And like, I know, like even just saying like last year was the worst year of my life without a doubt. And a lot of that was because of, you know, romantic partners being awful. Yeah. And then, so I've defined a year as terrible because, you know, one or two people were trash, you know? Yeah. And when in reality, I'm then surrounded by what, eight to 10 incredibly high quality human beings who never have once made me question my worth, have never once made me feel like I'm anything less than one of a kind and magic. So then it makes me almost feel guilty for then defining a year as such when in reality, I was given like literally the best year of my life because for the first time in my life, I felt like I could ask for help and then get it. Yeah. And that's something that I have a very hard time doing is saying, I need you right now. Yeah. And last year I had to do that a lot, like a lot more than I ever thought I would or more than I ever wanted to. And every single time it was never left. I was never left hanging. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think with that being said, it was the worst and the best year of my life. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's those hard times that really show you who's, who's there for you and who's truly, you know, supports you and everything like that. And, you know, I appreciated that you trusted me enough to call me some of those times when you were having those hard days and that I could be there for you and talk with you. And then I knew you had other people around you too, that you could have those conversations with. Um, and you know, it's just, it's, it's, um, it's awesome to see people, showing love for each other and yeah. supporting each other. Cause there's this world is already so negative enough and there's so much just hateful shit that when you see people loving each other, like embrace that support that. And, uh, you know, and, and, um, and make sure that happens more often. Cause we all yeah. need, there's a lot of hate in this world. We all need more love. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and the, the more that we find it, the more that we all grow together and evolve together. And, uh, you know, and like we said, those, those, uh, you know, bad times or whatever become fewer and further between yeah. and, and more like outside factors that not things that we can control, you know, yeah. like life and death happens and we can never control that. Yeah. And that happens and, and it sucks. But like the, the things that we can control, the people who are around us and stuff like that, as we surround ourselves with more love and, and, you know, great people than those bad times from inside sources, like relationships or whatever, those go away. And then yeah. it's just, you know, dealing with the outside forces of life that happen, you know, when somebody unfortunately passes or yeah. something along those lines. I've always like taken a stance that you know I'm the only one that actually cares about my problems because everyone else is dealing with their own and there's comfort in that but then there's also a loneliness factor to that and I know there was multiple times last year where you would just call me or you would text me and check in and I'd have other friends that would check in with me every single day and every single time I would be like baffled that people first of all remembered and two took time out of their day and I think that that's there's something so sad about that that there's like there's shock involved when someone cares about you or like validates something awful happening to you and wants to make it better and wants to make sure that you're, you know, you're mentally okay. Yeah. And I think that that's like, be a mark, like shock people with how much you care. Hey, and being honest, it's the exact same feeling. I mean, I, I know you've always been there for me and I appreciate that and I'll always be there for you. And that's what makes friendship a great friendship. And so oh, yeah. I think that's a great way to end it. I know these cameras <laughs> it's are like pro- two hours later. <laughs> yeah. I think we're an hour and 47 into this. Oh, wow. I think these cameras will eventually die. So Anna, before, uh, before we, uh, before that happens, can yeah. you plug your socials? Where can people find you? Oh my God. I hate having spelled my Instagram name, but <laughs> get your pen out. Go for it. <laughs> A-K-A-T-H-A-R-I. I N A V A wow, Katharina V. Baby. You had to really think about that. For I a really second. did. Everything yeah. was. Just, my brain is mush now. I cried on camera. That was deep. I fucking love it. <laughs> love it. Well, I don't want you to cry, but I, I love. I hope the, I don't have anxiety on the way home. I love. The, I didn't say I, anything. No, you didn't. I love yeah. the openness. It's thank important. You, thank you. So, all right, everybody. Thank you for listening and. Uh, Thank you for being here. If you're hour 48 into this and you're still here, we you're love a you. Warrior. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> it. And uh, we'll be back soon. Yeah. See, see you guys. Bye.